how shitty would a movie be if all the actors in the movie kept on reminding you that, oh, this isn't really real, this is all an illusion, this is just uh, fabricated, it's all scripted. Like, that movie wouldn't be very engaging, would it? And we are in a movie, and we are playing roles, and we are actors and actresses, so let's play. You shouldn't get too blissed out in the other realms and, and like, oh, everything's one. Because, yeah, everything is one, but at the end of the day, if someone came in and murdered your mum, you're not going to be sitting there meditating on how you love that person, are you? Are you? Really? Well, maybe, maybe you are, and, and if so, you're probably some sort of ascended master. I'm not. Uh, if someone came in and raped Chelsea, for example, I'm going to... Well, I would never want to murder that person, but I imagine a violent reaction probably would happen, especially if I caught him in the act. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, however much I don't agree with violence, in that situation it would have to be that way. Because I'm playing the game, do you know what I mean? I'm playing the role of boyfriend. We've kind of gone off on a tangent there, but I think that was important to bring up. So, yeah, just touching back on the whole age gap thing, um, is a real touchy subject, really, and it's really controversial, because there's obviously a lot of mothers and fathers out there that probably disagree quite vehemently with what I'm saying. Um, but my point is that I don't see a problem with age gap relationships as long as there isn't any sort of grooming going on, as long as there's no sort of manipulation going on, and that it is a totally mutual thing. Otherwise, I do disagree with it. Unfortunately, 99% of paedophilic acts are manipulation, and there, there's grooming going on and all sorts of horrible stuff, which I don't agree with. And I want to reiterate that really, really important point, because I don't want anyone to think that I'm condoning that. I think that's why <clears> it's <throat> such a taboo right now, is because that's the case most yeah. of the time, is that people are doing it. It's not a mutual thing. Yeah. I mean, it is sometimes, but... There was an actual story I'm, I'm thinking of. Um, an older man, I think he was in his mid-30s, falling in love with a 14-year-old, and he went to prison because they obviously had sex and they were in a relationship. And then he got out of prison after a couple of years. She waited for him, for him and they continued seeing each other after she was 16. And by then it was obviously legal. Um, and they're happily married with a kid. And she's like, I don't know, 20 now and he's late 30s. It wasn't like him trying to manipulate the situation or groom her into believing that he was the one for her and... You know, it was genuine. Another thing is that people's views on these little nuances are going to differ. So, say for example, someone can be a very compassionate, loving, caring person. And they could totally disagree with what I've just said. And then there could be another compassionate, loving, caring person. And they could totally agree with what I've just said. There's still two people that are prime candidates for being in a utopia, yet their, their fundamental beliefs are the same, but the nuances and the intricacies in their beliefs differ. So what do we do? I mean, how do we all get on the same page? Now, man, I, I haven't been able to come to a conclusion about this. I, one possibility, I thought, is that maybe there wouldn't be one utopia. Maybe there would have to be different branches, different, different branches yeah, different, different groups. That you so if you adhere to a certain rule set, you go to Utopia B, or if you adhere to another rule set, you go to Utopia D, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And I, see, I like, don't know if that would work or not. But. What's complicated about that is that each sect would have to be sure that there is a mutual under a mutual like understanding amongst each branch, or else there would just yeah. wars would easily arise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that's a point that Jeffrey brought up. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It would have to be a web, you know, like, they would have to kind of support each other in some way. Yeah. Yeah, there's just know. yeah, there's just something about that at first glance that yeah, I find that really could complicated. could be quite dodgy. Because that could cause... Um... That's not really a utopia, either. No. Because when I think of utopia, I think of it's unified, one. unified, yeah. Well, that's, that's what I mean when I said I, I haven't really been able to come to a proper conclusion, because I don't feel like that is the answer. But it was just like something I thought I'd throw out there just as a possibility. But that probably wouldn't work. Like Chelsea said, wars could erupt and disagreements amongst the different utopias. And then that's defeating the whole purpose of, purpose of what a utopia is. Mm -hmm. 
it's difficult stuff, man. It's difficult stuff. All this, like, it's it's real. We're treading a fine line, I think, when we talk about this kind of stuff. But we've got to because I think we're now reaching a point where we're getting pretty close to the first layer of a utopia. Yeah. This is another point I wanted to bring up that I don't think the term utopia encompasses just one thing. I think there'd be different layers to a utopia. So you'd start off at a very basic kind of utopia and then eventually as you worked up and up and up the chain it would just be complete unity and then laws would be redundant. But I think on the first layer of a utopia when we're kind of um, testing the water, do you know what I mean? Like We're just trying to work it out and adapt and adjust to the new way of thinking and the new paradigm. I mean just the act of bringing a new paradigm into the forefront of society would be a difficult process and there would be birthing pains as it were. Um, so I think it's important to realise that we're not going to go straight into a full-fledged utopia but we're definitely reaching the first first layer. I think the first um, like step we should take um, would be like no more government. Like, I think the fall of government is really important for something like this. We all just need to be living mutually with a mutual understanding and no, like, capitalism or looking down on other people or condescending yourself by looking up to someone else too much, you know? Yeah. But you see, I think, I don't see a problem in government. I see a problem in the way that we've created government and the way that government works presently. I think it's corrupt, but the actual concept and idea behind a government, I think, is quite a healthy thing. Yeah, but another thing is you'd have to have a unified world government. Now, I'm not talking about the New World Order here, guys, but, you know, it would have to be some sort of unified... It, it, wouldn't, even be a, it wouldn't even be called a government. It would be like, say, for example, like a group of elders that just kind of kept the society in check, kept it structured, kept it guided, kept it focused. It wouldn't nice. be a government necessarily, necessarily. I think the only reason I think of government so negatively is because I've grown up in a, you know, corrupt government and I've never experienced a, a proper government, government that works the way it should. Totally. And also like talking about laws and what they mean, I want to underline this point as well that I think laws would work slightly differently in a utopia. It would be more like universal laws. There couldn't really be a punishment, really, right? Like, I just well, yeah, and this is about... something I want to go into, about what would happen if you did break one of these laws. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll touch on that in a second. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I think that pretty much sums up what you'd be going for in a utopia. Like, if you, if you just lived by that rule then surely everything would slot into place. However, that brings up a very, very strange issue with, well, okay... Like uh, masochists. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but what about if you like being raped? So that means, going on that law, that it's okay to rape, right? right? Or if you have no problem with having things stolen off you, then going on that law, you're allowed to steal. I think that people who are on that level, though, I mean, I'm not going to say this is how it is, but I have a feeling that they just haven't, they just haven't realized yet that that's not how it works. You know, like, masochists, they may really like pain, but that's just where they are in their journey. Like, I think they have a lot that they need to remember. And that's the thing, like, I think... Once we get to the point where a utopian society would be possible, like everyone's going to be evolved enough that they remember how it worked before. Yeah, I think because I'm sure we've all lived in a society like that at some point. Because that's what this awakening is: is is it's remembering what we've forgotten, right? 